All right, guys, you've seen these before. These are the Mission Impossible 920 four barrel test heads. Well, we did some work on them. Didn't go crazy. They get decent flows for what they are. Basically a, a deep cleanup, right? Well, we got a friend in Wisconsin named Mark. He's like, hey, I got a 920 and I was going to cut it up and I'd like to send you some pieces. So I got this bomb proof box in the mail with all kinds of cool 920 pieces. Now, after these were mailed, Rob, who owns the 920s, said, you know, that turned out pretty good. I think I might be using those 920s for something. So if you haven't cut them up already, don't. And I'm like, yeah, no problem. So I don't know if these are going to get used as much as I had hoped to use them, but they're going to be cool to look at. So let's start laying them out and uh, take a look. Now, I don't care what anybody says, cutaways are really cool because you get to see a lot. I mean, if you take a look at that exhaust port there, you can see how the floor is wider than the roof. Right? Completely stock. The floor is wider than the roof. For good reason. Okay, it's a little tough for me to do because I have to uh, you know, hold the camera and so forth. But we can get a little bit different view of this, right? And then we can turn it to the side. This piece, I don't, I don't see where the rest of the bowl is. He may have, he sectioned a piece off the back, so we don't have that whole bowl, but we can certainly see how the short side is designed. Okay, see this really sharp point on the factory valve job? Well, if we improve the valve job and give it a little bit, a little bit of a radius, uh, you know what I'm saying. More like that, right? Curved a little bit. That's going to pick up some flow, okay? Now remember, these are 1.5 exhausts. There's plenty of metal across here to fit a 1.6 exhaust valve, no problem. Okay, at the seat here we are, it says I got a dead battery. Okay, let's try again. E05, I don't know what that is. Okay, sorry guys. If we go to the real thick part right here at the seat, yeah, I got four, almost a half an inch of iron there, okay, which is nice. All right, we got plenty of metal on the chamber. You could do some serious chamber shaping if you wanted to. Of course, the stock chamber is big enough, right? So that may not be what you want to do. I do think it's interesting I'm not sure what this lump is for here, just to give it more water area, I think. Okay, I would have never done that. But you can see, as long as you don't raise the roof a tremendous amount, you could make this completely straight. I would say make sure you do some serious sonic work, because I know by the time I take some metal out of these, these sides here, right, change this radius in here to actually bring this down. I mean, that's quite thick here. Let's measure that. That's, ex that's how thick our roof is. Our roof is 34 thousandths thick. But the problem is, we want to put a curve here. Okay, so that 34 thousandths doesn't really go as far when we're, we're putting a curve on it, if 
you understand what I'm, think, I'm, I'm talking about. So you do have to be a, a little cautious on that roof because if we remember how they looked from here on, they were completely dead flat, okay? We don't have that piece, doesn't look like. Interesting view, mirror images, right? This one's a little bit meatier because it moved off the guide a little bit. So we can see a little bit more of the port shape. Overall, it's a decent shape. I don't think I would have expanded the port up as much. You can see the taper that was designed into the port. I probably would have just raised this floor and had it the whole port coming up if I was to design it from scratch. Why is it like that? It's the way they originally designed it. You gotta remember, it's not a new design, okay? I don't know when the poly, they got rid of the poly and they went to the 318 uh, inline valve, but these are 67 heads, these are 920s, so. Okay, intake port. Now, you can see how much metal is around this guide that you can work with, right? You can take a lot of this off, which is what I did, right? If we uh, looked at the, the DV open chambers, right, I raised this roof a bit. I couldn't go crazy, but I was able to raise this roof a bit. I was able to take off a ton of this guide material and give us a little more area to bring, to bring the port around. Okay. So we can see right down the port, we can see how they have this angled over to the side. I'm not really sure what they were trying to do. It looks to me like they were trying to force air towards the center more because as we know, a lot of the air likes to follow the straight wall. That's why we always have uh, dicum on that side. Okay, we're trying to get these set up as close as I can. It's actually an interesting view of the shape of the port. Okay, I don't know how well you guys are going to see that short side radius, but completely stock, these have a damn good short side radius, okay? It's laid back a little bit, it's nice and tall. Now, you can see these do not have a stock valve job on them. They've, they've had some kind of work at some point because there's more than one angle on that. But it doesn't look like anything has been done past the valve job. You can also notice how much metal we have around the bowl. You know what I say, I say you can take about a hundred thousandths off and you're good. I would say that would apply to this, right? You could probably take a hundred thousandths off anyway. Now, you know what is interesting to me? is let's set my calipers if they don't have a freak out on me to 1.78 lock it down okay so that's how big the valve seat is. Now you have to remember we, we're missing a little material from blade thickness. Okay. So how got, how big do guys open these? I've heard they go to about 208. Well, let's see what a let's see what a 200 looks like. No, we'll make it a 202. I don't want to waste all day getting it perfectly accurate. It's it's close enough. Okay. You know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to make some marks and I'm going to show you the problem with putting a bigger valve in these. Of course, we do have to take into consideration we are missing, you know, probably whatever the thickness of the blade was. I don't know what he cut these with. I think he cut it with a chop saw. So a chop saw blade is... Uh, got to be at least an eighth of an inch, right? So we're missing about an eighth of an inch. So keep that in mind. Mark, if it wasn't a chop saw, please let me know. 
Okay, a little tough to show you guys, but I'm, I grabbed an old uh, retainer that's probably about the thickness of, uh, of the soil he used, right? And we put our 202 marks on there. They're not perfect in every way like Wiffy, but they're close enough for us to get an idea. Okay, uh, of course my drawing is not perfect. It's a felt tip pen on a piece of cut cast iron. But the point I want you guys to pay attention to is how close we get between the bowls. All right, when you put the bigger valve in, you're definitely going to need quite a bit of a radius here in order to not break into water. Okay, this side is a little bit more generous. You can make it a little bit straighter. Besides, it exits onto the cylinder wall. You want you want this wall to be straighter, and you want this wall to be more curved, so it dumps towards the center more. Okay, you can get a, a good view of, of the short side radius right here. It really is a great design. As far as the whole port is designed, to me it looks quite a bit like a cathedral port. Chevy. What do you guys think? All right, tall and thin, all right, with the sloped roof like that. The, uh, the LS short side is straighter and comes down faster, but that's okay. In any case, completely stock. These, I don't know exactly what, what they flowed completely stock. I did do that test. You'd have to look it up, I don't remember. But uh, without too much work, I got these flown pretty decent. I don't remember what I got. You can tell it's already hot in Florida. My brain is cooked. And it's only Tuesday. All right, this piece of intake port that's right next to our bolt is different. I'm trying to, trying to remember. Now, I think it was after this point. After this point, the rest of the bowl, there was a really thin spot over here on DVs and it was in a really bad spot because you really wanted to move the port over to bias it better to, to window out of the port. I kind of wish Mark had gave us those pieces but it's it's not nothing bad against you Mark. You didn't know. Obviously you use some kind of you use some kind of a tool whether he's got a mill or something. There was some other piece that had marks on it. Let me find it. All right, now that I look at it, I'm not sure what kind of tool he used to, to, to take this metal away. But it is interesting the way he, it, it's, it's done. Okay. Let's see which, which port this is. Okay, maybe he did give me all the par parts. Sorry, guys, the old clutch is really freaking shot. Super, super terrible weekend, let me tell you. Super terrible. I haven't been that stressed out ever. I thought I was having an aneurysm. Okay. But from what we can see here, completely stock isn't bad. You put a bigger valve in it, as long as you don't get carried away on your bowl or your throat, these things will make some, they'll make some nice airflow. I really hope, I really hope Rob wants to do something cool with these and uh, he's going to have to put guides in them. I'd like it if he put, you know, I would like it if he put like magnum size guides. And probably a 200 or a 202 intake valve with a 1.6 and some work. I could see these going 270, 275 without too much trouble. And probably. 210, 215 on the exhaust. That would be a fun project, actually. You know, and if you have cutaways and stuff, it makes life a lot easier. You know, I probably should have done this from the start. You know how much I like puzzles, right? I think of an engine as a big puzzle anyway. So whatever piece I thought was missing, it is in this uh, Rubik's Cube of parts here. Okay, we showed you guys that already. That is our matching side, which is the center of the cylinder. 
It is kind of interesting how the bowl goes right to the plug boss, right? Okay, there's the piece I thought was missing. It wasn't missing. It was in the box. So now we can see our entire exhaust. I really think we should put it as level as we can. You can see the bowl's got a decent shape. Really, let's do a little uh, a little magic marker action and uh, show what this thing should look like. Okay, fairly close to 1.6. Fairly even across where the valve seat would be. Okay, now this would be a fairly stout ported piece, right? You can see where you're you're gonna be tight is on that roof. Right? Where that bulge is, you're gonna have to sonic that or do what I did. I left a little bit of a bulge there and you're pro probably pretty safe. Now if you do have a head to cut up, it's really nice because you can just measure everything so easily and see how thick everything is. It makes life a pleasure when you gotta go use stock castings and try to get some power out of them. Notice there's not a ton of metal here to enlarge this bowl. Okay, enlarging this part of the bowl will give you better high lift flow, okay? But there's not a lot there, so I wouldn't do much. This part, you could take some decent metal out because you're relatively thick there. Let's flip this around and see what we got on the other side. And you can't see a whole lot. We got rust. Okay, guys, and the other side. Let's see if there's any views I forgot to show you guys. Okay, this is kind of interesting. That's our exhaust exhaust bowl, right? That's the that's the cylinder side of the exhaust bowl, right? If we really wanted to push our luck, we'd like to move this over to get put better bias on there, and we've got. At the thickest part at the top here, you got about 0.27 inch metal, so you could move that over a decent amount, okay, before it gets really thin. Now, down a little bit further, feels a little bit thinner, right, where you really want to take the maximum turn radius, right about here, is definitely thinner. But this is already coming into the bowl, so it looks thicker. Okay, I think we're going to finish this up. It's already almost 18 minutes deep. But uh, I'd like to thank Mark for building us a bomb-proof box, cutting up a head for us in uh, a nicely sectioned way, actually. Now that I see what he did, he did a great job on this. And he paid for the postage out of his own pocket. Got to appreciate that, right, guys? Be sure to thank him in the comments. And... Uh, it's really interesting how uh, the factory engineered these. And, you know, some things I love about them and other things I'm like, what were you guys thinking? <laughs> but I'm like that with most engineering. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.